In this documentary, I set out to explore how sharing music online affects its value as a cultural product within the UK. Underlining such discussion is the notion of value, an ambiguous concept that brings together social, cultural, political, economic and psychological aspects of music consumption and sharing behaviour. Therefore, it is imperative to take into consideration our current listening patterns and habits, but also to ask what motivates us to share music online and opinions about it with others. Some of my friends are into the same music that I listen to, so I just presume they would like the songs I've just, let's say, discovered. I like to hear what they're into as well, so do a bit of an exchange with, I suppose. I, I buy a lot of CDs, uh, don't have many for free. I do share music online, but only through iTunes, so you know you can share your library with different people. I don't share music online because um, I don't know how to because I think everyone should listen to what I listen to and I think it's a good way of getting attention for the music that I like. I love you, little robot. You are my favourite toy. I sure do like your robot. May I give him a try? No. He's mine. All mine. I've been listening to music. I'm well, absolutely in love with music, really, since I was about 11, I think. All of my friends were in love with music, lots of different types of music, um, and we were very into sharing music together. And in, in those days, you would be invited round to somebody's house, to their flat, and uh, somebody would give you a smoke and a cup of tea, and you'd sit down on the sofa, and somebody would literally put, you know, ceremoniously put the vinyl record on the record player, and then you'd sit there and listen to three or four tracks pretty much in silence. So I'm old enough to have remembered several different cycles of music and also several different formats of, of music and the way it was delivered and the effects that I feel it had on me and other people. I feel like music is quite an intimate thing to share with someone. And usually it's really strange, but actually like when you're starting a relationship with someone and you're starting to like fall in love with them, they always like share music to you and like the lyrics always like match to what they're feeling and stuff like that. And it's just really nice. I think we share music because we share passions. I think it's a way of getting to know somebody and it's about getting to know yourself and putting yourself forward to somebody. It says something about your own identity. And that's the, why we do it. We listen to... Um, new acquaintances and we ask them a question where, where do you live what's your name what do you do and almost invariably we say what kind of music do you like because it's quite a good icebreaker and it says something about that person then we make an impression based on their taste i want to play with that robot <laughs> well that wasn't very nice was it maybe you should try sharing sometime it's really strange because what we've created is this ability to share and yet we don't really share. We call, what we call sharing is sending some, something from your individual computer in your office or at home to somebody else's computer so that they can separately listen to something. That's not sharing in the same way. That's sharing a, the... the it's not even an object anymore. They're sharing the item, but they're not sharing the experience. I just um, share my music with my friends, and we just um, we just copy our music. Usually, just internet, pretty yeah. much YouTube, YouTube and stuff like that, and links from YouTube mostly, most of the times. Yeah, definitely. I think it would be really weird if I would find out that there's a new album and I couldn't like listen to it on the internet. Literally, whatever you think is on YouTube. Somebody's done it. I've, I don't think I've ever not found a tune that I've thought of. I could think of the most obscure punk single ever, and somebody will have bothered to have recorded it with a picture of the cover or the band or something. It's just amazing. So, to ha now that is where I think sharing has improved. This is my robot. He's awesome. Would you like to give him a try? I sure would. I'm so lonely. Whee! I told you sharing is fun. 
Yeah, I think the same. Yeah, on YouTube, it's really easy to find new music, but it's still um, a really lot of work when you um, s search for a certain genre of music and you want to um, search for new mu music in this genre. It's quite difficult. It just becomes like this endless bargain bin of debris of just shit. It's just you know a sea of shit that you've and you've got to search really quite hard to find something that's worth watching or listening to. I don't know if that's a problem of our times, but it's definitely a syndrome of our times that the, the notion of value has really changed. Um, what I think's gone there is the anticipation, the build-up. So I'm not sure we're as bought in to our music. So I think that's quite a good example of being able to enrich knowledge very quickly. In terms of depth, I'm not sure how often you go back and back and back to those songs, whereas if you own them, you would be, because you've parted with your labour through money, economic exchange, symbolic exchange of goods and money, then you're more bought into it. So in the same way that we have a newspaper and the average life of a newspaper is 45 minutes and declining, if you bought a book which costs much more money, you're more likely to spend more time on it and more time with it and perhaps enjoy it more. I don't know, value is a little bit of a subjective thing. The value of finding it a tune for my daughter in my Spotify inbox is, is really high for me. It's like, oh, she's thought about me and she might introduce me to a new band. But it would have more value for me if she, if she put a CD or a DVD together with all of her favourite tunes and actually burnt it to a DVD and put it in the post with a nice little note saying, love you, daddy. You know, that would have more value for me. So on the one level, I want to say that things like YouTube, you know, sp putting out a Spotify list through YouTube is less intimate. But actually, I'm not convinced that it is. I mean, I think music's got huge potential for political, emotional, social value, interpersonal value, um, spiritual dimensions. I think music taps into them all. So I think it's valuable to many different people in many different ways over many different times. So one piece of music that's valuable to me in an emotional sense, maybe from my childhood, may have different meaning to, say, a student today using it for political reasons or just just as an advert, you know, background music to advert. So polysemic decoding of music is one of its most wonderful values and it's the hardest to pin down. Sharing music online seems deeply embedded in our culture. But as the ways of sharing have drastically shifted in the last decades, the online experience has become mundane, thus increased the value of our lived musical experiences.